why I, why I made it in the first place was because I was fascinated with the looks of the thing and this keyboard part. But this is long before the days of the internet. Nowadays you can just sit down within five seconds you've got hundreds of YouTube excerpts. <laughs> you, can, you can see people playing them and hear what it sounds like. But I was like, oh, what's it sound like? I went to music uh, instrument museums, like uh, was it St. Catharines or St. Caroline's or somewhere, down, down in the Cowgate. And we've got them in there, but they're behind glass cases. <laughs> I still don't know what it sounds like. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and also nowadays as well, you're likely to have a little box beside where you can press a button and oh, get an yeah. example of somebody mm. playing it. So I thought the only way I'm going to ever hear this thing is to make one for myself. Well, the, the original is a medieval instrument called an, or, an organistrum, which is pretty much the same idea. Handle, uh, the, the strings are, are turned by this wheel here, which is rosin, like a violin bow, except it's continuous. And uh, there was a two-man job, the organistrum. One person turned the handle, and another <laughs> one sat at the side and actually pulled the things up ah. to make the string, or turned handles which, mm. which bent the thing up to touch the string. And, uh, this is the first instrument I ever made, and I, I had was I was totally clueless, really. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just made from modelling plywood and bits of wood that I had about and anything. The wheel should be much larger, I, I find out now, but that's the largest wheel that I could make at the time on the, what I, the facilities I had available to me. Mm. And um, How do you get the, um, the edges of the body? This, uh, that, was, that was the worst part, really, because you can see that the grain is going up and down that way. It's, again, it's mm -hmm. plywood. And it, it, that's that was the, the the tightest curve I could get oh, on, right. on the body, <laughs> and with the grain going that way, because uh, if it was a proper one, the grain would be going, and it would all be steamed and pressed and everything. And, uh, so is that just force? Yeah, professional uh, guitar makers and luthiers they have these big wooden moulds mm. that they they sort of lash the pieces to and steam them, so they take them off and they stay in shape. But this was forced every inch. Of the <laughs> So what actually is Super Collider? Super Collider is a computer music environment. So it's got a, a sound server which lets you make pretty much you know, any sort of sound. You can sample sounds, you can you know, build a sound from primitives, um, you can use some pre-made uh, complex sounds and things. So it comes with you know, really obscure sorts of plugins and things. Presumably you can have bindings for other languages as well. Yeah, so Overtone's quite popular now. That's um, closure based. Right. And um, so Python? Yeah, there's a Python one. Okay. There's... there's a Python. What? Can they do this in Python? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and that's so, come from like 20 lines of code. So yeah, the basic idea that was kind of awesome, somebody, has doc somebody <laughs> the, the guy who made the original THX sound um, documented what it was, and so somebody you know, took that and wrote it as code. Uh,